I am John Pulsfer, and I spend a lot of my time at Twitch as an integration success engineer, helping a lot of our developer partners be as successful as they can be um, integrating Twitch features and services into their games. So how many here are primarily in a, a business role in your organization? All right, and how many developers do we have? All right, so a little bit of a mix. Um, I'll try and keep that in mind. So about six or eight months ago, I read this interview with uh, Elon Musk, and he was talking about the payload shroud on the Falcon 9 rocket. And this is about a, a $5 million, at the time, non-reusable piece that, oddly enough, shrouds the payload. And, uh, and he said he challenged his team to think of this as if it were a pallet with $5 million in cash on it falling through the atmosphere and ask them to find a way to catch that pallet. And so, in a way, that's what I'm gonna to talk to you about today, right? The game, the game business today is a game of inches. Um, and we're, looking, we're all looking for every advantage. Uh, and I wanna to talk to you about how Twitch can be one of those advantages to help your, your already fantastic game um, be more successful in the market. So, this is the kid that, uh, that beats you soundly whenever you play online and then says horrible things about your mom. Um, but uh, these numbers tell a story about the massive, uh, the massive reach of Twitch. 100 million uh, monthly active devices. Uh, viewers are watching 241 billion, billion with a B, minutes of content on Twitch. And, and the average user is watching 106 minutes per day a full-length movie of Twitch content every day for an average Twitch, Twitch uh, viewer, which is crazy, right? Um, of that, mobile devices make up more than a third. About 38% of, of uh, content is consumed from mobile devices, uh, Android and iOS, about 2 billion minutes a month uh, across Android and iOS. But the real story here is not the number of minutes consumed, it's that, that 25 million daily chat interactions. So what you get here is a story about users that are not just leaning back on their couch watching this content, they're like leaning forward, right? They're, they're talking about stuff on Twitch with their friends and what are they talking about? They're talking about your games. They're talking about games that they like, games that they don't like, they're talking about stuff on Twitch that relates to games, right? So, so an amazing audience. Um, and I would just, just you know, put in the TLDR here that Twitch is your biggest game trailer overall, right? Um, and at Twitch, we believe in, in deep analysis of data, right? We're sort of a data machine, all these minutes watched, et cetera, right? So um, I, would, I would call your attention to that blog post uh, by a former um, uh, data scientist at Twitch, Danny Hernandez. Maybe you've read some of his stuff. It's fantastic. But this really goes into detail about um, what he's found about games that really resonate on Twitch and games that, that don't, right? Um, and there's some really good findings there and, and data to back them up. All right, so let's talk about some ways that, um, that you can use Twitch to your advantage. All right, so as a developer, I start counting at zero, of course. Everybody does that, right? Um, and so I have an extra special bonus rule zero. There will be no extra charge for this rule. Um, and I hope you're prepared to take notes. So who in here has played Hearthstone? All right, Hearthstone is a really good game. It's a really effective game on Twitch. It's a really successful game um, with their audience. Um, all right, and, and, and Hearthstone is a good game. How many here have played Retroids? All right, this is my game. I wrote this game on the bus, um, and uh, it has about 20,000 downloads on Android. It's all right, um, but it's, it's no Hearthstone, right? Um, so, Rule number zero is make a good game. Um, there's nothing about Twitch that will make uh, a, a, uh, a bad game successful, right? <laughs> uh, I mean, there might be some, some pops while people talk about how horrible it is, but, but really the, the, basic, the basic fundamentals of games apply. You still have to make a good game. All right, rule number one, help your streamers. And I kind of have titled this Twitch mode Right, and we'll talk about why that is in just a second. Um, but this is really all about making your games easier to use for your influencers, right? Your streamers have these fan bases. Um, and one of the things, as we've talked to thousands of streamers in roundtables, is they have privacy concerns, right? Um, 
And if you think about your game as, as uh, or your, I'm sorry, your broadcasters as TV hosts, like Jimmy Fallon or, or whatever, right? Um, and your game is a guest on their show. And just like when an actor goes on one of these shows and, uh, to plug their new movie, um, they're looking for people that are good guests, that are entertaining, that are interesting. And if they're interesting and entertaining, if they're good guests, they'll be asked back. And if they're really good guests, they'll be a recurring character, right? You want your game to be a good guest on, on uh, the show these guys are hosting. And so one of the concerns that they raise is occasionally you still see games, maybe more than occasionally, that will show information on the, on the UI, like uh, IP address or account names or, or um, uh, email names. There's, there's a, a variety of things that, that games just sort of throw up there, right? Which, when you're playing at home, doesn't matter. But when you're streaming your game and you're getting you know, all kinds of attacks and denial of service every day, right? Th those things are a problem. Um, so that's one of the things. Um, and um, another thing is content. Um, so has anyone in here worked to license music for a game? All right, well, usually there's, there's a few. Um, that's a difficult process and it's a costly process, right? Um, and, and typically games, when they do that, are, are pretty proud of that content. The problem is those licenses don't allow streamers to stream that in general, right? And so streamers have to do weird things to, to sort of drown out that music and, and things like that, or have no sound at all. Um, so providing a way to, to silence that hard, hard won uh, licensed music um, so streamers can, can just sort of stream your game more easily, again, being a good guest, um, is, is always welcome. The third thing that we hear is audience engagement, right? Um, streamers love to give things away to people, to their viewers, and viewers, strangely enough, like to get free stuff. Uh, so if there's something in your game, if there's a way to do this, not every game can do this, but if there's a way to give streamers stuff, your key streamers, that they can give away to their viewers, do that. Right? Whether it's, it's keys and there's various you know, key mailer and other services that allow you to do that. Um, uh, or if there's other content you can provide in some way. You know, that, that goes a long way to winning over the streamer, to wins over the audience who loves your game. Right? So, um, and again, you know, I'll just leave you with the plug to, to, um, to be a good guest. Um, all right. Talk to your audience. So, who in here has uh, a marketing or a community engagement plan for your game? Everybody, right? You should raise your hand even if you don't because otherwise you'll just be ashamed. Um, all right, so my plug for you is make Twitch part of that plan, right? For many of you it is already, right, in some way. Um, and sometimes that part of that plan is, well, we'll have, we'll have some engagement but we're not going to go big on Twitch or whatever. But consider how Twitch fits into your, your community engagement strategy. Um, and and it's just, it just can be a fantastic tool for that. Um, early access. Hearthstone, uh, as Danny uh, calls out in that blog post, uh, used um, uh, the combination of early access and Twitch as, as a really powerful one-two punch as they launched into the market. Um, and, uh, you know, it's difficult to say. It's a, it's a really good engaging game. So it's difficult to say how important that is, but it certainly didn't hurt, right, um, in, in getting their, uh, their sort of beachhead of success. Um, and um, another thing that Danny points out in his blog, there was a game called, uh, in his blog, there was a game called Squad um, that really went above and beyond in incorporating uh, design and balance feedback from broadcasters in particular. Um, and, you know, so, so listen to the feedback from your broadcasters, listen to the feedback from, from viewers, and, you know, importantly, let them see you act on it. Um, I always say, like, from a software development perspective, um, uh, when you're doing a release, there's, there's always, it's sort of like this, this uh, iceberg thing, right? There's a, uh, some stuff you can see, and there's usually a bunch of stuff that isn't really visible. But it's always important to save some budget in your, your, your plan for uh, uh, that part that people will be able to see. So they can see you reacting to their feedback, because that, that goes a long way. Um, and lastly, you know, on, on this topic, I would say stream the game yourself, right? Um, you don't have to be a huge streamer, um, but stream, stream your game yourself and listen firsthand to what people say about it. Um, 
Have any of you guys ever done uh, uh, the studies where you're like behind the glass and the user uh, studies and you watch people use your software, play your game? Um, that can be hugely aggravating, right? Because they're just not doing it right. They're just not getting it, whatever, right? Um, but as, as a software professional, as a game professional, you, you learn how people are really gonna engage with your, your product. And, and that is, is just uh, you know, hugely valuable. All right, um, way number three, extensions. Um, last fall, Twitch released a viewer interaction paradigm that we call extensions. Has anybody heard of extensions on Twitch? All right, um, so extensions opens a whole new way to engage viewers and to get them in the game with the streamers. Um, here are a few examples. Um, and one of the things I, I wanna point out, well, first of all, most of these examples are, are really about information uh, in one way or another. Um, but I do wanna call out that these pieces that are running in an extension, those are under the control of the viewer. Uh, it's not like the streamer is, is broadcasting all this stuff. So, for instance, in this one, uh, do I have a laser on here? So this one up here, if the, if the user clicks on uh, Johnson here in this, this basketball extension, then his card pops up. That doesn't mean everybody watching the stream sees that, it means I see it, right? I now have some control over my viewing experience that I didn't have previously. Um, and you know, we have, we have some other extensions here. The Hearthstone ones are amazing. If you're a Hearthstone player, uh, check out some of the Hearthstone extensions. Um, they've done some great work. Um, and we've also recently announced um, ways to monetize extensions, monetize through extensions, uh, so that you can sell uh, items that relate to the extensions, um, if you will, um, uh, maybe uh, skins or cosmetics that relate to the extension itself, um, but you can also sell in-game items through the extension. Um, so there's some interesting new ways to monetize there. Um, all right, so this is kind of where we are like right now on extensions. Let's talk about where we will be in a month in extensions. So I wanna to talk to you um, about uh, uh, the idea of a dungeon crawler or world builder where um, it uses Twitch extensions and the viewers of that stream can participate right along with the streamer in play in the game. Um, and this is uh, some very early screenshots of the game Wilderlands from Andrew Standifer at 2D Heroes. They're a little rough, but uh, Andrew was kind enough to, uh, to allow me to share them. Uh, and you can expect this in, in uh, 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 beta or, or alpha, uh, some kind of early release very soon. Um, but the idea here is, okay, you've got a pretty standard kind of uh, uh, 3D dude walking around, uh, going into a dungeon, killing stuff, stealing things, that kind of, that kind of deal. But now we have an extension. And so the player, he's watching the action unfold in the game, but he's got this 2D extension um, right below his, his, uh, his viewing experience. And the, the viewer is playing along with the streamer. And so um, you see uh, in this, this uh, extension shot kind of how it, how it would appear in 3D. And so if you're the, the pigtail girl with the sword, and you go trotting across the, the, the camera view of the streamer to, to kill something or steal something, boom, there you are. You're on the stream, right? You're playing in this 2D world. You're showing up in the 3D world. Super cool. The stills don't really do it justice, um, but uh, it, is, it is an amazing experience. And then while uh, the, the players who are selected from the stream are, are playing in the extension in the dungeon, other players are... If you notice here, they have, there's these, uh, these sort of clumps of land in the world, these islands and stuff like that. Um, they're doing things like gathering resources, they're building buildings, all this stuff that's participating in the real game with the streamer. Um, anyway, it's, it's super cool. Um, and uh, you'll be able to follow along with its progress there, uh, uh, twitch.tv uh, slash 2D heroes. Um, and, uh, and see as it evolves. Um, and you'll recognize, he's not talking about it as Wilderlands on his channel yet, but you'll, you'll recognize um, these things if you go there. Um, so very cool stuff uh, possible with extensions. And extensions is one of those things where, you know, as a platform company, um, and this has happened in all the platforms I've worked on, 
we kind of come up with something and we, we feel like it has, has some, something there. And so we, we throw it out there and then people actually do what they're gonna do with it in ways that we probably didn't expect, which is great. Um, and, that, and that's what we're seeing with extensions. Very cool. And Andrew's got a bunch of other cool extension stuff cooking. So uh, if you're interested in this, check out dev.twitch.tv slash extensions. Find out about this mysterious diagram, the pieces you need to build to, uh, to make this happen. Very cool stuff. There's sample code and all that, uh, all that stuff up there. All right. Engaging players with drops. So we have this incentivized engagement model um, called drops. Um, you can basically make players aware. You can market to players. Hey, go link your account and you'll get stuff from watching us on Twitch. So they link their Twitch account. Then they start watching other streamers play that game. That causes heartbeat data to come back every minute that user is watching somebody stream that game on Twitch, boom. Hey, Bob's watching, Bob's watching, Bob's watching. You can accumulate all that data and at any pace you want, whatever feels good to you and your game and your economy, you can give them stuff. Um, and you can notify them of a reward that they've got. They come back to the game to get the reward and while they're in the game, they play, right? And while they're playing, they're like, man, I wish I knew more about how to play this game better. I wish I understood strategy. I wish I knew how to beat this boss, whatever, whatever the context is. So they watch more, and then they get rewarded more, right? I think we're in a, a, a pretty psychology-heavy business, uh, so I think we're kind of familiar with, with sort of the, the dopamine tweaking and, and the rewards and stuff that's happening here. Um, and you can, you can adjust these rewards however you want. You're 100% in the driver's seat here. This isn't, isn't Twitch telling you how you need to reward people. Um, and I usually tell people, you know, my advice is first reward should come pretty quickly um, and uh, maybe be a, a small tokeny thing. Then the rewards kind of stretch out, require more, more engagement. Um, and you also need to have a point where you're like giving people a chance at something because a chance at something that you don't get psychologically is just as good as a chance at something you get, which is super weird, right? But, but uh, tons of studies back that up. Um, but but whatever, however you want to model the, the incentives and, and the rewards and the pacing here, you can totally do that. Um, and some of the, uh, the results we've had with that, um, a high res expo, uh, you know, a th up a third on peak concurrent viewers um, and up 61% on minutes watched uh, versus their pre-drops um, uh, pre uh, uh, expo. Rocket League up 322% from the previous season uh, when, they, when they applied drops to their, uh, their uh, game. Bethesda had great uh, results on their E3 showcase last year um, and uh, others. Fortnite has used incentivized engagement, um, uh, although they built their own because they built it before we had ours, but uh, um, uh, huge positive results there. So the last way I wanna talk about is selling your game on Twitch. So, um, when uh, uh, people are viewing a game on Twitch, uh, your game can be right there for them to buy if they want, right? If you've, if you've put your game on Twitch, then they can just be watching this, any streamer stream the game and they can buy your game or your in-game content right there. Um, and this lets you, you basically sell your, your games and your items organically to the people that are watching it anyway. They're already interested. We spend so much time and effort in this business getting people interested in our game. Here people are already interested. They're already watching your longest trailer ever, right, as I said, on Twitch. And all, you, all we've done is add a button, a, a buying opportunity for them. Um, and the other thing is, as I mentioned before, streamers are, are, they have fan bases and their fans love to find ways to support them. And so um, when they buy games and items on, on Twitch, some of that revenue is actually going to the streamer and, and people really, really like doing that. So, um, and here's an example. Um, this is Brawlhalla. Where's my little red thing go? Um, so circled over there um, is, are the items that they're selling. And uh, I see, you see this little note that part of the purchase revenue is shared with, with Brawl League. Um, so I'm like, yeah, I'll buy some stuff. I was gonna buy, buy some coins anyway, so I'll do that. Um, and when you, you buy from Twitch, 
you, uh, we, well, we have a, a detail page like you would see in any store that kind of shows the game and the trailers and stuff. Um, we have uh, the Twitch app game library that, uh, where we can actually distribute the bits for your game. Um, if, you've, if you've claimed any Twitch Prime offers for games, they show up here. Um, so um, you're probably familiar with that. And also I'll add, if you engage in Twitch Commerce and you later have a chance to do a Twitch uh, 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 Prime offer, um, you've already done the work. It's the same technology that powers Twitch Prime. So, All right, so wrapping up, help your streamers, talk to your audience, take a look at extensions, consider how drops could work for your game, and consider selling your game and your items on Twitch. Any questions? So speaking of extensions, are you guys looking at any, any um, integrations with uh, other technology like game engines or other platforms like Facebook or, or other things like that uh, with the extensions? Well, Facebook is, a, is an interesting case. Um, <laughs> They would consider themselves a bit of a competitor, I think, to Twitch. <laughs> so, so uh, that there would be challenges there. Um, never say never, right? Um, other game engines and platforms, in in particular, sure, right? Um, uh, this is probably not what you mean, but but there's a bunch of Twitch integration uh, that exists and is going into Amazon's game engine, Lumberyard. Um, and we're looking at, at those similar types of integrations with uh, Unreal and Unity. Uh, my team has done a little bit of work uh, on the Twitch Commerce side on integrations with Unity um, to make some things easier for partners. So sure, we're always looking at that. If you have something in particular in mind, um, I'd love to talk to you afterwards and see what we can find out about that. It's okay, totally okay to make Chris run with the mic because he's eaten like 10 bananas today. So. Yeah, I mean, I need to burn these bananas, right? I have one quick question, and it's a little bit outside of what you talked about, but. You know, I think it's great to see all these um, tools being built, but I was wondering if you could comment at all on what you're seeing people do in, rela in relation to their game design itself to better incorporate mm. Twitch. Yeah, so one of the things we see with, with uh, game design, I mentioned uh, just sort of streamer friendliness. That's, that's one element. Um, but also we saw some features um, uh, with uh, some games that maybe didn't, didn't blow the doors off like, like we had hoped, uh, Lawbreakers comes to mind, um, where they're looking more deeply to integrate like your, your Twitch friends graph into the game, um, to use Twitch identity as the game identity. Um, so there's a number of things that people are doing in the game to, to integrate that. Is that kind of what you were referring to? Or yeah, that? totally, totally. Yeah. There's actually, so there's an indie prize game uh, called Darwin Project being developed in Montreal. Uh -huh. It's a battle royale game. And it's uh, it won best multiplayer in Kiev, I believe, Indie Prize Kiev, most recently in October. And what's really cool there is they have a director mode. So one player isn't playing the game at all. He's controlling a camera, which he can then run through his stream. He also controls when certain areas of the map shut wow. down, what kind of power ops get dropped into what kind of areas. So I would definitely recommend taking a look at that yeah, and getting in touch with those guys. Now, you guys have seen Choice Chamber, probably. That's an older game, and they use Twitch chat to to have basically what we do with extensions. There's an extension version now of, of Choice Chamber. Um, one of the things that we've seen uh, companies looking at is things like supply drops or airstrikes. Um, we have one very large partner we're working with, and their, their goal is to push their, their streaming viewer audience down in the, the, the streamer stack, right? So instead of being dominated by a few top streamers, um, they want to push that down and get a more breadth. And so what they're doing is they're saying, all right, well, we're going to randomly pick five people from every, every match, the, every five viewers from every match, and they can do a supply drop in this one particular game mode, right? Uh, of course, you have, that brings game balance issues, so they have a game mode around this uh, that they're looking at. Um, but that has the effect of, oh, wow, if I'm interested in this game, I'm going to go to a place where there's fewer people, so I get more of a chance to, to participate in the supply drops, right? Um, uh, and that's something they're building through extensions as well. So, yeah, other questions? No, I think that's it. Okay, uh, well, that's all we have time for. If you have any more questions for him, John, you'll be around. Yeah. Maybe hang out outside for a little bit. But a uh, big round of applause for John Paulsifer, please, from Twitch.